Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Jason B. Ingram here for All Elite Daily on the All Elite Zone. Coming at you on Monday, October the 21st. I'm telling you that because I'm not sure when this will get posted. So uh, when I go over the wrestling history at the end, like I always do, you know what day I'm talking about. But today I want to talk to you about the Young Bucks and tag team wrestling. Now, I'm not a big Young Bucks fan. I never have been. Nothing against them. They might be great guys. Never met them in person. They are um, they're a spot fest, but they're not the only ones. And for anybody that wants to come down on the Young Bucks and cheer that the Motor City Machine Guns are in WWE, I mean, I'm glad Saban and Shelly are getting their shot at the big time. But they're basically the same team. They have been for the past 20 years. They're, they're spot teams. And that's okay. A lot of people like that. I'm, you know, you can tell by the videos I'm older. I like the old stuff. Now, you know, the Midnight Express, the Rock and Roll Express, Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson, stuff like that. I really like FTR, but, you know, FTR does not mesh well with the Young Bucks, and I just I don't like their matches either. So, But the reason I'm talking about the Young Bucks today is everybody's giving them so much crap. And one thing I hate to see is, you know, people jumping on Cornette's bandwagon. Now, I like Jim Cornette. I said I was a Midnight Express fan, but, you know, he's got nicknames for just about everybody if you listen to his podcast. And you'll hear him call them the Cucamonga Kids. <laughs> you know, you got people that want to jump on there and start using these nicknames like, like they came up with them. Stop being a troll. You know, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, Cody Rhodes, you know, it was their vision and Tony Khan's money that created all elite wrestling. And, and I'm grateful for all that. It gave us, you know, an alternative for the first time in 20 plus years since WCW closed down. And that's good for the workers, the guys, the girls. And the audience, it gives us something else to watch. I mean, WWE had gotten really stale there for a while, you know, being the only one out there. And this this new gimmick they're doing, well, it's not really new anymore, but, you know, the EVP gimmick they're coming on with, everybody was giving them such a hard time online, they just decided to, you know, they, they brought it to life. They brought the EVP characters to TV. And, you know, I'm, I think it's kind of funny. I mean, you know, they, they have turned out to make great chicken shit heels. I still don't like their style of matches, but that's kind of what it is. And, you know, people are after Dynamite last week. Why did they walk away? You know, why didn't they help out when John Moxley's crew came out? Well, I'll give you my opinion on that. I think where we're going with that is, again, I go back to where they helped create All Elite Wrestling. And, you know, I'm not sure Kenny Omega's status, how close he is to coming back or anything, but... uh I think what you're going to see with or without Kenny Omega, you're going to see the elite finally have to step up and fight for the company they helped create against Moxley's crew. And that's going to be with or without Shane McMahon. I'm still up in the air on whether I think he's coming in or not. But, you know, the Young Bucks, they, they do what they're supposed to do. I mean, they're, they're part of what today's wrestling is. They, you know, they've helped innovate along with teams like the Motor City Machine Guns, innovate to what what we see today with the Lucha Brothers and stuff of that nature, part of the match they had with Private Party. I mean, everybody raved about the cage match a few years ago with the Bucks and, um, excuse me, the Lucha Brothers, and it was just a spot fest to me. Was it entertaining? Absolutely it was. It just had no psychology in my opinion. But again, that's my opinion and what I like. Uh, it's not disdain for the Young Bucks. I mean, again, I'm grateful for the, to them, Kenny Omega, Cody Rhodes, and Tony, and Tony Khan's money for creating and giving us something to watch in AEW, and I'm interested to see what it's going to go when, when I, in my opinion again, where I think they have to turn face and fight John Moxley's crew to save the company they created. Let me know what you think in the comments about that. See where the Young Bucks are going, and stop being a troll and calling them the Cucamonga Kids. You're not Jim Cornette. That's his thing. If you want to call them names, come up with your own shtick. And today in pro wrestling history, and again, I don't memorize this stuff, so I do write it down, so I got to look away. The big news today, actually, is Samantha Irvin has left WWE. She is uh, done with her ring announcing duties in WWE. We'll see what the future holds, whether it's AEW or something else, because we know her her man, Ricochet, is now in AEW. Six years ago today, Nick Aldis pinned Cody Rhodes at the 70th anniversary NWA show to regain the NWA world title. 23 years ago today, Chris Jericho won his first world heavyweight title, defeating The Rock to become the WCW champion. Of course, this is after WWE had bought it, and we're using both titles. Jack and Jerry Briscoe, 41 years ago today in Richmond, Virginia, where I am at, defeated Jay Youngblood and Ricky Steamboat to become the new NWA World Tag Team Champions. 28 years ago today on Raw, another Monday, Triple H defeated the wild man Mark Marrow, or Johnny B. Bad, if you will, to become the Intercontinental Champion. 
47 years ago tonight, Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat had one of their epic battles before what we remember for the United States title in Charleston, South Carolina, and Ricky Steamboat came out on top. And then 39 years ago, Ric Flair is still in the history as he faced AWA world champion Rick Martell in a very match that didn't take place very often, excuse me. And that was in uh, the All Japan show at Sumo Hall. 33 years ago today, Jake the Snake Roberts attacked the Macho Man Randy Savage on WWE Superstars. And I remember that well. If you've never seen that clip, that's where Jake pulled out the Cobra. And the Cobra sunk into Randy Savage's arm and it wouldn't let go. They X'd it out because of all the blood. 28 years ago tonight, Bret Hart returned to the WWE to tell Jim Ross that he was staying. And he was not going to sign with WCW. But we also know how that turned out. And then birthdays today. In an interesting coincidence, two of the sheep herders, Butch Miller, which is one of the guys we remember, and one that a lot of people don't remember that was a sheep herder, Jonathan Boyd, Lord Jonathan Boyd, were both born on this day in 1944. And a big happy 54th birthday going out to D. Lo Brown. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. about. You can tell me about Samantha Irvin, what you think, where she's going. You can tell me what you think about the Young Bucks. And again, yes, that is the Young Bucks, not the Hookamunga kids. Come up with your own shtick. Jason B. Ingram for All Elite Daily. AEZ Daily on the All Elite Zone. Check us out. Still got the Wrestle Zone Unfiltered we're working on. Got a sister channel that's out there as well. Check that out. And uh, again, let me know what you think in the comments about what we discussed today. And I'll see you next time.